Hello, it's Alimek. In today's video, we will be working on this Volkswagen Jetta and it has poor engine performance. An EPC warning light along with the check engine light is on on the dashboard. Whenever we have warning light on the dashboard, we should be able to read it with OBD scanner. The code is PO2263 and its turbocharger boost performance. This code comes up when the turbocharger not building any pressure. Either the turbo shaft stuck due to broken bearing or the air leaks somewhere. We also have a spare junkyard turbo in case we need to replace the turbo. So I'm gonna show you how to check it before putting on the car. You can rotate the compressor side to feel if it spins freely and not touching to the sides. Because the clearance between the housing and the blade is less than a millimeter, it feels good not touching to the sides. And the second test, use a needle pliers to wiggle the shaft to test the bearings. It shouldn't be moving side to side like this and also not in and out so this turbo is not good the shaft wiggles under pressure the blade will touch the side slow down the speed and making whining sound so we're gonna be removing filter box and the air duct between the turbo and throttle body checking any broken parts that causing leaking air otherwise it will be the turbo which is located here so i removed the clamp and the pcb hose to remove the filter box out next removing the sensor wire harness and this hose to take the air duct out so the first thing I saw, the throttle body not being cleaned in a long time, and some of oil sitting here too. But so far I haven't found any broken part to leak the air out, so it means we have a problem with the turbocharger. So I sprayed some W40 on these bolts. Since they are bolted on the exhaust side, sometimes it will be hard to remove them due to heat and rust effect. I thought the heat sheet plate will come out but it didn't so I had to remove turbocharger coolant line as well. The cover is off and I also had to remove this hose to see if the oil got into the turbo. The good thing is there is no oil in the turbo, it's just in this hose. And I also found a problem, the actuator rod that opens and closes waste gate is broken. So the gate is always open and the turbo not building any pressure. This is the waste gate and the broken shaft actuator no longer have control on this and it's always open. And this gate most of the time is closed until the turbo builds recommended pressure and then it opens. Let's disconnect the wire harness and remove two bolts to remove the actuator. Here is the actuator and the shaft is broken. Let's remove the other piece on the waste gate. We just have to remove the C-clip and it comes out. So in this case you either have to replace the whole actuator or will the broken part and that's what I'm gonna do. I had to wrap a wet rack on the actuator to prevent from heating and not damage while welding. Alright first side is done, let's flip it around and do the other side as well. I had to file the excessive wheel to make it flush but it's not that important, it's just for look. I think it's much better than before and it has more meat. They should make the shaft thicker so it doesn't break over there. Next I use CRC intake and turbo cleaner. It was a good time to clean it before putting everything back. And the reason I use CRC cleaner, it's safe for turbo and the throttle body. And now we will put the actuator back on the turbo. You don't need to have a welder, you can just replace it with a new one. Next we will put the C-clamp back and then the wire harness. Next putting turbo hose back and then the exhaust heat shield, bolting everything back just like we remove it. I had to use CRC intake cleaner again on throttle body and use a brush to agitate the oil and then gently wipe it with a paper towel. After that I use throttle body cleaner for extra cleaning. Alright the throttle body is clean now, tucked back on the turbo and throttle body. These steps are very easy and exactly a reverse of how we remove them. And the last piece is the filter box, all clamped down and ready to go. Alright, let's turn it on. If the turbocharger building enough pressure, the EPC warning light should turn off by itself. One last thing, check engine light is still on. It will take some time till the engine's computer calculates and turn it off, knowing that there is no problem with the engine. So I will erase the previous code with the OBD scanner now. And now the engine gained its power. Hope this video gave you an idea how to check user turbo and what causes EPC warning light to come on the dashboard. Alright, that's for this video. Hope the video was helpful and learned something new. If it was, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.